Hello from the snowy north. Gary and Gage out playing. Yes, we had snow, then we lost snow, now we have snow. Is this stuff going to stick around? I don't know. There goes one of the neighbors plowing down the road. Uh, I'm not going to bother plowing my driveway. I'd rather go on an adventure. So I'm just out at my bird feeder right now. And I wanted to show you guys. Um, so we bought this lens last year, the Tamron 150 to 500, made for E-mount. And I just happened to be scrolling through uh, one of the photography sites I peruse. And they mentioned that Tamron had released a new update for this camera. So that's pretty awesome. When you can buy gear and a year later, they're still doing firmware updates. So this is version three firmware. And what it does is it they've added manual focus when in video mode. Uh, there's an assist manual focus. And they've also um, updated the tracking for moving subjects. So it's supposed to track better on moving subjects. So I may wander the woods a little bit today and try the new uh, firmware on the camera just to see. I don't think I'll notice much difference because I gotta tell you, the 15500 made for E-mount is so fast that lens already. Uh, it just, it locks on, It you know, you touch the screen, it tracks whatever is there. I was never disappointed with what it already could do. And I probably, it gets to a point where it's so fast, I don't think Gary will even notice the difference. What I do need to do is go up here and check on the hunting blind. I haven't been up here probably in 10 days and we've had some wind and snow and I, I'm betting that it's tipped over on its side, full of snow. Let's go take a look, fix it, set it up. Gage will appreciate the walk anyway. Well, the woods are very pretty today. We're getting all these little clumps of snow in the branches and it's just beautiful out here. I can also update you guys on the 90 acres that I put my offer in for on the back end here. Uh, the neighbor, Tom and Dave, his father-in-law own the 90 acres over here, which is the trail we always run on. And then if you go behind my house and up the other way, that 90 acres is for sale. And uh, the guy wants a crazy stupid amount, $2 million, and it's protected wetland. And he will argue with anyone and everyone that it's not, but we've all got photos and video of Blanding's turtles in here. Um, frogs, all kinds of things on the species at risk list. And there was a company in town here that just got charged last week a $200,000 fine for disturbing Blanding's turtle nesting area. Well, that's exactly what this is. I've showed you guys the turtles come right up from here, 300 yards up to the road, through all of our yards, and lay their eggs. So the houses that are here on this road never should have been built in the 1930s, but they didn't care about environment back then, right? The city was expanding, they needed a new road, they put it in and it, it was what it was. But nowadays, all of this wetland back here is pr protected by the Mattawa Conservation Authority and there's no way they're gonna let this be developed. And uh, I wanted to purchase it, leave it undeveloped, you know, put a four-wheeler trail just to go through and do photography and hiking and snowshoeing. I put in my offer, as you guys know, this guy wouldn't even accept the offer except the package to look at the offer. So he never even looked at the offer. Instead, he tried to call me and say, hey, what is the offer? And I said, I'm not telling you what the offer is. I paid my realtor to submit an offer to you. If you want to see what the offer is, sign the paperwork, which is a disclosure saying, you know, that the guy works for me. He's submitting an offer on my behalf. That's all it was. It's total legal stuff that has to be done, right? And uh, this guy refused to accept the offer. So I am not bidding on the property anymore. He can take it and stick it. And I will fight him to the death on uh, him trying to sell this and get it developed. I will make that my life goal. He will be, he will learn who his worst enemy is. And it's not just me, it's all the neighbors here. We've all agreed. We're not going to let this be developed.
Oh yeah, it's blown over again. Uh, so the roof is very much full of snow. I'm gonna wipe all that down so it doesn't freeze. We'll try to tie it down a little better. Well, it is beautiful out here today, but the snow is now turning to like a wet rain. So you can see my jacket soaked. The camera's getting all wet. So we're gonna have to head back to the house. It's not good, you know, have $6,000 in gear out here in the rain. Uh, luckily I'm filming on my phone today, so that's not so bad, but uh, oh, wetness, electronics, they just don't go together. Good morning everybody. Fresh coating of snow. I have not gotten out to do any photography. This is our third snowfall. And there's probably eh, three, four inches out there. The trees have a nice coating. Let's go for a drive and see what we can find for winter photographs. There's a nice old 1930s homestead in there. And I photograph it all the time. I'm waiting for it to just finally cave in and disappear. The one building it kind of has on the right. And then the out shed there is still standing, but not for much longer. 1930s. I like to look for old buildings, uh, barns and farmhouses that are falling down. That's my jam. I don't know why. You know, ever since I was a teenager, I have loved photographing that stuff. And I love finding it in different seasons and photographing it each season. So that's kind of what I look for is old, you know, fenceways. I love fences. Anything to do with, you know, farming history. Well, just history in general. And then you throw a little bit of snow on there, Gary gets all excited. Now this time of year when you're driving around, you gotta be real careful because there's lots of snow removal equipment on the roads. The city bus was actually in the ditch last night just down the road from my house. Went right through the stop sign and down into the ditch. So when I'm out on main roads like this, I try not to stop and do any photography. Try to get on the back roads. A couple of tips guys when shooting out your vehicle. Put the windows down. If you leave the window up, you get a blue tint to all your photographs because of the tinting on the windows. Especially the windshield. Don't ever shoot through the windshield. It's also angled. So you will get reflection and glare and thing like that. So get out of the vehicle when you can or put the window down. And the other one that people don't realize is turn your vehicle off because you do get jitters, micro jitters happening with the engine running and you will get blurry pictures and you'll be like, I can't figure out why. It's because the engine is running. I learned that, it took me a long time. I had a lens and a camera that I blamed for years saying, this lens is no good. Well, it was my drive around in the truck lens, that's why had nothing to do with the lens. It was because I was taking photographs with the engine running. <laughs> 